watercolour skies with clouds. Today I'm going to show you two easy ways to paint them. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour and a little bit of mixed media too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon you will get notified every time I have a new video for you. I make one free video a week here on a Thursday on YouTube with extra content on Saturdays for my Patreon subscribers. So today we're talking about skies and more specifically clouds. Now you get all types of different skies with all types of different clouds, all sizes, all shapes, all colours. However, it all boils down to two basic types of cloud and that's soft edge clouds and crisp edge clouds. So today I'm going to give you a different technique for doing each of these. The first one, the soft edge clouds, is uh, really considered to be the sort of the most usual way of painting watercolour clouds and the second one is a bit more unusual and it's one that I was taught actually when I started painting by a botanical artist. So um, I haven't seen anybody teach the exact same method. Maybe it's out there, I'm not sure. But anyway, it works really well. So we're gonna do soft edge clouds and we're gonna do crisp edged clouds. I feel like I'm saying some kind of tongue twister, really uh, clouds. And I'm going to talk about ways of achieving these. Now, the main mistakes that um, people make with skies is they work on them for too long. So you have to let go of the idea that you can get the exact cloud formation or the exact sunset formation or the exact anything in watercolour. That doesn't mean you can't control watercolour because you absolutely can control watercolour, but you have to understand its limitations. And it's not like an oil painting. If you're doing an oil painting and you've got a cloud in the sky, you can spend literally weeks working on that cloud and getting it to look exactly the same as the cloud that you see. Now in watercolour, for each layer that you put on your sky, you've got maybe a minute and a half. And if the weather's really hot, you can cut that down to 30 seconds. So stuff has to be done quickly. So you have to get an impression of the sort of sky you're looking at, not the exact sky. So that's one thing to consider. The other thing that people don't realise is that you can work in more than one layer on a sky and you absolutely should because it's much, much better than continuing to work. And I'm sure if you've started painting recently, you've been continuing to work on your sky and the more you work on it, the worse it gets and the more drying lines it gets. So we're going to look at that as well today. The first thing to consider with hard and soft edges is how it is affected by whether you paint on dry paper or damp paper. So I'm going to show you first of all what happens when you paint on damp paper and what happens when you paint on dry paper. Just a quick little technique and then we'll get on to the first of these, uh, these types of clouds which are your fluffy soft edged clouds. So I've got some blue paint here. So this is a thalo blue and this is um, Jackman's Art Materials thalo blue. So I'm going to use um, more than one blue today which I'll explain about later but just for the second I want to show you the difference between placing a colour onto wet paper and placing a colour onto dry paper. So if you've been painting for a little while, you probably know this, but if you're a beginner, this is probably one of the most important things that you must understand about watercolour painting. So here I am on dry paper, and you can see that I get a real sharp edge to the paint. Even if I leave the edge kind of ragged like this, it's still sharp, by which I mean it doesn't fade gently out. So if I want it to fade out, I need to go onto damp paper. So I'm going to get a clean brush and clean water. And I'm going to, this time I'm going to wet the paper. Now, it isn't quite as simple as just going onto wet paper. You want to make sure you don't have any puddles. Because whenever you have puddles, the paint will run and bleed in all sorts of ways. And although this can be useful for certain techniques, most of the time you just need it to be a bit more under control. So I'm getting this paper nice and wet, but I haven't left puddles there. And I'm going to go in again now with the blue paint and you'll see the difference. Now if this paint that goes on second is really wet, it's fairly wet here, you can see it's feathering out the edges. Um, if it's really wet it will bleed. Again I don't want it to be drippy wet because it would just run everywhere especially because when I'm filming I can't keep the board completely flat. Um, if I want the paint to really stay put I can go in with really quite sticky, quite thick paint and I should be able to keep the paint exactly where I place it but I've got a sharp, uh, I've got a soft edge rather. So you can see the difference here between this sharp edge and this soft edge and that's what we're going to be using today when we paint our clouds. 
So now you've seen what happens when you paint on these two different types of surfaces, the wet and the dry, and you might think it's just as easy as painting your soft edge clouds on a wet surface and painting your crisp edge clouds on a dry surface, but it isn't quite as simple as that because even when you have these sort of crisper clouds, they're not crisp all the way around. They have areas of softness, so that's what we're going to address in these uh, techniques today. So I'm going to show you how to paint the fluffy clouds next. I'm going to point my camera downwards at my drawing board, and then I'm going to show you how to paint more crisp edged clouds. And then I'm going to go back to each of these cloud types in turn and show you how to put shadows into them. And it's not the same for both types, so do make sure you watch right the way through. So when I'm filming these clouds today, what I'm going to do is for these soft clouds, I'm going to be painting on an actual full painting that I'm doing. And the reason for this is that um, this is the subject of my uh, that my Friday class students are doing at the moment. Now for the second type of sky, for the crisp clouds that we're going to be doing in a minute, I'll be working on a sample of paper. So that won't be a full painting, that will just be me giving you an example. So that's what's happening there. The foreground of this as well, I'll actually be putting up as a uh, as a tutorial for my um, Patreon subscribers. Um, if you don't subscribe to Patreon and you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry, I will do um, seas and waves and things in due course on my YouTube channel, but with all my other work commitments at the moment, I can only get one video up a week. So this week we're going to be doing the clouds. So I've got some paint here. So this is, um, this is the phthalo blue that I was using just now. So this is the, um, the Jackman's art materials. They're very good tubes. These have got little, um, little flip caps so that they don't get all gunked up. Although I still managed to make a mess of mine, but there we are. Sometimes I forget and I unscrew them anyway because because all of my other paints unscrew. Um, I don't want to use this colour just on its own because, you know, if you look at it here on this sample that we just made, it's rather greenish, which actually I think works fairly well for the uh, for the sea, at least for places of the sea. But I want to um, I want to have the sky now. And so what I'm going to do is mix it in with um, some manganese blue. If you haven't got manganese, then cerulean works very well as well. Your phthalo may not be as green as this. Um, either way, I may even adjust the sky with a tiny touch of pink. This is something I often do in skies just to warm them up a little bit because these um, these more green based blues, they can be a little bit arctic. They're very good for skies, but they can just be a bit too cold. So I often warm them up with a touch of pink. Now, the reason I'm putting the phthalo in at all in this painting is because I want it in the sea as well because um, you always want the sea and the sky to reflect each other. It doesn't mean you have to use exactly the same colours, but you always want at least a little bit of the sea colour in the sky, which is why for this particular painting you'll see me using not just the manganese blue, but also dropping some of the sea colour in that I know I'm going to use later on so that we get that lovely, um, lovely look through the whole painting. However, for the purposes of this video, I'm just doing the sky for you. So what I'm going to do now is get some manganese blue and also a tiny touch of pink. I'm going to get my sky colour ready. I'm going to get some clean water and a large flat brush because what we're going to do is wet this sky before we go in with the blue paint. It's really important that I mix enough blue paint to get over this whole sky and that's quite a lot. The last thing you want to do when you're putting a sky in is run out of paint. It's an absolute disaster if you do that. So if anything, mix up a little bit more than you need. So I'm going to get all of my colour ready and then swatch it to make sure it's how I like it. And then I'll show you how we're going to get those nice soft clouds. So let me show you my new colour. So I've got the original Thaler Blue. I've added some Daniel Smith Manganese Blue, which is more of a pale turquoise granulating blue. If you have Cerulean Blue, it's like Cerulean, but a bit more punchy. And I've put a bit of Quinacridone Rose in by Talons Rembrandt. And this is just to warm the colour up. So often it's a good idea if you're using these Thalo Blues or the, uh, the Manganese or the Cerulean Blues to warm them up with just a touch of pink. Not enough to push it into purple, but just to take that coolness off and that edge off. So if I show you now what I've swatched, this was the first swatch and then I added a bit more of the Cerulean. So you can see here it is dark and here it is with more water. And with the sky that I'm painting here, you can see it's a much better sort of colour. And yet because it's got this first colour in, it's going to relate to the C that I am going to place in later on. But that is not for this video. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do these soft fluffy clouds. So we're going to use this soft edge effect and it's a really simple process. Doesn't mean it's easy, but it is at least simple, which is one thing. I've got clean water here 
and I've also got other water here. So I have two water jars on the go and this is because I need to put completely clean water on the uh, on the sky area. Really important I don't get any blue in it. This brush here, I've had it for years, I never use it for painting so I know that it's pretty much always clean unless it's picked up a little bit of something. It's clean so I can go straight in and put my water on the sky knowing that it's clean. And then I've got my other brush and I'm going to use this brush to place the uh, the paint in. I may even actually go and pick up, I've got a really large brush, like a size 20, I might pick that up because we have to work really, really quickly on this sky. It's um, almost summer here in the UK and it's actually very warm when I film, I have to all the doors and windows shut and all the, all the lights on. So it's very warm in here, which means it's gonna dry even quicker. So what I need to do is I'm gonna put my water across the sky area and then I'm gonna drop the blue in quickly and leave it alone. Another thing you want to do when you're putting skies in of any kind is if you can fade them out a little bit as you come towards the horizon. In that way you get something called aerial perspective which is that things naturally become fainter into the distance. So if you're standing here, if you're on, the, if you're standing on these pebbles here, this bit up here, this is the bit that's close to you, this is above your head, whereas this bit down here, this is the um, in the distance. So you want to go a little bit darker up here little bit lighter down here. We're going to get this idea of a large cloud with a few fluffy bits around the edge. As I said, I'm not going to try and get this exact cloud because I just won't do it in watercolour. That's something you would have to do in oils or acrylics, but um, we're going to get a lovely cloud anyway. So I've got everything ready and now I'm going to paint. So I've got my paint brushes ready. Found this lovely great big size 20 brush. The rule with brushes is, is use the biggest one that you possibly can manage to use for the uh, the subject that you're doing. If you need to go down to a smaller brush, you go down, but as much as possible, use as big a brush as possible because watercolour doesn't um, doesn't like sitting around and being prodded at for ages. You know, you need to get it on fast when you start working. I've got my photograph, which is just going to be a rough guide, so I'm going to place that. You can't see it now, but I can still see it. I've also got this kitchen paper, and um, I'm going to use this when I need to, to dry my brush. Now, you may have seen some tutorials like this where people get either kitchen paper or a sponge and they dab out their white clouds. Although I do use that technique for other things, I'm not keen on it for clouds. I just don't think it looks all that realistic. I mean, and I, I think people kind of, they get a little bit addicted to using that technique. So if that's the technique you normally use, do try this one instead. I think you'll get a more realistic look. It's possibly not as easy, but um, I, th I just think it gives a more natural look. So what I'm going to do now is wet my sky. This will also be a little easier for you because I have to, um, it probably looks from the, uh, the video that I'm having this board tipped up towards me, but I am actually filming it with the board slightly tipped away from me. I've never yet managed to um, master having a camera that looks flat down at my board and um, I have all the uh, all the gubbins that I need for it. I built a, a rig to go above my head. I have um, my partner lent me his proper camera but I just couldn't get on with it. I had trouble with lenses and self-focusing and uh, you know what, in the end, I'm not very uh, very great with technology. In the end, I just found so much easier to use my phone and I get so much of a, a better result, but it does not like being tipped completely downwards. Even with adjusting all the settings, it just won't stay put. A little bit of fluff there, I'm just getting rid of that. Never worry about fluff if it's, you know, if you're halfway through painting, leave the fluff alone. You can pick it off when your painting's dry. So there we are. So. I've got water on there, it's nicely soaked, but there aren't any puddles. I'm just going to get sweep around the edge there. The last thing you want is puddles sitting in the corners and giving you trouble. And then straight away, I'm on with the sky. So I'm going in. The paint is still quite thick and that's on purpose because if I go in with really, really wet paint, it's just going to spread everywhere. So I'm going in now, starting at the top and as I said, trying to get this idea of um, it being a little bit darker up the top and fading out a little bit further down. So just getting those soft cloud shapes. With clouds you want to think that they're generally more rounded towards the top and generally more flat towards the base. So as I go in up here I'm kind of trying to get this idea of a roundness to the top of the clouds and then we'll go in down here. 
it is possible if it dries too faint it is possible to put another layer in it's um it's, it's kind of the case with skies that um that the sky that you make or the way you where you think oh my god that's far too dark i've gone crazy that's usually the one that dries just about right because paint does dry watercolors do dry an awful lot lighter once they're on the paper whereas other mediums like acrylics for instance can dry darker i'm about to be sent some new acrylics um, paints actually to trial out and do let me know if you paint in acrylics or if you're interested in acrylics um, you know watercolors are so popular on this channel of mine um, but i do teach i have taught acrylics as well they're certainly not my specialist subject but more than happy to do acrylic painting for you i'll certainly put uh, put up a basic um, acrylic painting up for you to have a look at and, and just we'll see just what result we get on this channel so there we are and you can see it's not identical to the uh, to the sky that I've got on the photograph. I've um, I've faded it out towards the base here, and I generally find that if you just sort of sweep across that bottom bit and just get that softness in it, then that's really good. It is possible, and we'll just do it very quickly, and then I'll leave it alone. It is possible with a brush that has been dried, just if you want to, just to suck up a little bit more paint. And you can do this anywhere you need to lift out paint as well but I really want you to be careful and not work on it too long I've got about 10 seconds here before it just gets too dry to work on so I'm going to cut my losses and leave it at that as I said if it's not dark enough let it dry it re-wet it and put another layer on we're going for softness anyway we're going to re-wet this one later when we put the cloud shadows in but um, that's the first layer and to be honest, I'm fairly happy with that. So next I'm gonna show you how to paint these more sort of crisp edged, more defined clouds. And this time we're going to do a little bit of drawing first. So onto method two, um, forgive me again if you can hear the pigeons, they sit on the roof and at this time of evening they begin to sing. So you can see this time I've actually drawn the cloud shapes. Now I don't always um, advocate for drawing in skies, in fact almost never, because it usually gets trapped under the paint and it looks you know, very odd, which, you know, you'd get away with it if it was just behind a bush or something, but in the sky, it's not great. But for this particular method, we're going to be avoiding the pencil line, so we'll be able to rub the pencil out before we go on to, um, on to putting the shadow on. So I've got, um, I've got the same paint. I put a bit more um, of the manganese in there just because there wasn't much in there, and it's a little bit runnier this time. We're going to do the... Um, almost an idea of putting a flat wash around the cloud shapes um, so they'll be hard edged. Now if we just did that they would look rather um, unnatural. So what we're going to do is um, this method that was taught to me by a botanical artist many years ago. So what I'm going to do is actually get um, clean water. I'm going to paint the clean water in the clouds. What will happen then is we'll take the uh, we'll take the blue paint around the edges and we'll have this nice crisp outline. Now, because you can't really see whereabouts water is, what will happen is occasionally we'll end up probably touching the blue to the water. And so we'll get an area that is soft. So we're going to get this really lovely natural effect where you've got a lot of crisp edges, but also some softness. So that's what we're going for. Now, of course, I would generally be working on stretched paper. This is just a demonstration piece. So we're going to start now and I'm going to paint my clouds in clean water and then I'll show you how to do the next bit not only have we got pigeons the neighbor's dog is now barking other neighbor was actually mowing his lawn um, earlier all going on here I'm just going to rinse that brush you can see it's got a tiny bit of blue paint on it but it's it's a very small amount it won't notice so I'm going to work all the way around all of these clouds putting the water inside of them and then I'll show you what to do next now I've got water in all of my clouds. As I said, you're going to work flat so it'll be easier for you. I'm on a bit of a slope, which is why you can see the water beading here. So I'm going to go in now. I've got my big brush again and I'm going to start up the top here. And I'm going to be working around the edge of those clouds like so. Now it, the paint will start to dry. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I keep this leading edge wet. And you can see I've arranged it so there's only a couple of pathways sort of through. 
so that I'm not trying to paint over here and paint over here because I don't want these edges to dry anywhere except where we're actually going around the edge of the clouds. There's our first layer. If you get any sort of madness going on, you can just dry your brush and lift that out. So I don't want puddles, although of course there are a few in between the clouds. So again, try not to let this edge dry anywhere and coming down in between both sides at once really. And this is the whole thing with watercolour painting. You have to work really, really quickly. And carrying on with that idea from the last sky, the idea of the fact that you should be getting lighter as you come down here. I've got very small spaces. I'm actually going to change to the uh, to the other brush and go in with a bit more clean water so that I can get an idea of things being a bit lighter down here. It's already drying down near the horizon here, so I'm going to sweep across so that I don't get any strange shapes going on there. Again, I don't want too many puddles, but I'm not going to mess around with it too much. I'm just going to lift some of these puddly bits out here so we don't get too much running. Um, it will lay flatter than that and nicer than that if you're on stretch paper. You can see this is why I stretch my paper when I'm doing anything except a demonstration piece. But what we've got there is crisp edged clouds with some softness. Now clouds painted like this, just leaving white paper, can look rather flat and rather two-dimensional. So what we're going to do now is go back to the first clouds I painted, the soft fluffy clouds because they're dry now. We're going to put another layer on and we're going to paint the, uh, the cloud shadows. So I'm going to show you how to mix the colours and how to apply the cloud shadows so they are also soft and you don't have any drying lines. At this point, if you're getting some value from this video, if it's helping you a little bit, could I just ask you to do me a favour and click the like button? YouTube rewards audience interaction, that's likes, shares, subscribes, comments. My channel has just passed 10k. I'm so grateful to all of you. And um, if you can do any of those things, then uh, YouTube will show this video to a few more people. So now these soft clouds are dry, I'm going to put um, some shadow. I'm going to use one of my favourite combinations. So what I'm going to do is get some Payne's Grey, which is this one here. Put it over here, actually. And I'm going to mix some of the uh, the quinacridone pink that I've already used into it. Now, it doesn't have to be pink. You could put a touch of something like this cobalt violet in, uh, any sort of any pinky purpley colour, just to give it that sort of... Um, that shadow comes in different colours, so it doesn't have to be this purplish, purplish mix. But I do find that more often than not, particularly if it's a little bit stormy, you get this kind of hint of purple to the cloud colour and because Payne's Grey has already got a ton of blue pigment in if you put a little bit of pink or lilac in it'll just push it into that slightly stormy colour. You can mess around with um, with yellow and things like that but you want to be careful if you're new to colour mixing because you can easily end up with green. So I'm going to air on the side of uh, caution here and just have a look at that. I actually would like it to be a little bit more pink than that so I'm going to pop little bit more pink in just off camera and let's try that. It's a good idea to just water it down and see how it looks when it's got a little bit of water in. That's not bad at all. So I'm going to use that for my um, my cloud shadow. In order to apply it I want it to be soft. I don't just put it straight on dry paper. Again we'll get those hard edges that we saw at the beginning. So I need it to be soft. Now if you apply water in places, which we may do later, but for this one we're not going to, what can happen is that where the water goes on top of the paint you can get a drying line. Because we've got so many sort of soft clouds here and because there's so many places to put the shadow in, I'm going to re-wet the whole area and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop those cloud shadows in. Cloud shadows are generally towards the base of clouds and sometimes they sort of delineate one cloud from another, so we'll do a little bit of that as well. I'm going to re-wet with clean water this whole area with my big flat brush. Now you might be thinking, oh god, it'll all move, but it won't actually. Um, it's important that you let it dry because if I did this and the paint was still wet, too much of it would be on the surface. It's a bit more stuck to the paper now. There will be some movement and there'll be some softening, but these are soft clouds anyway, so we don't mind that. I'm going to apply it very gently. You know, if you get a big sort of stiff brush and you really scrub that water on, then certainly yes, you're going to make a mess. 
if you've gone really, really over dark with it, of the staining colour, you can again um, get some kind of mess. I'm going to start wetting at the horizon because that's where there's the least paint so that I'm going to spread up and out. If I start at the top, this is me dripping water, let's get on with it before that water dries. Um, if I start at the top where I've got the strongest paint pigment, then there's a risk that I could spread more pigment down towards the horizon, which I really don't want. So that's why I'm going from the bottom up to the top. And you can see as I apply it here, there's really very little change. In fact, if you've made a bit of an error here and there, and it's rather too, um, you know, you've got rather too many hard edges, this can actually be a time when you can soften them up. You can take some tissue paper around the edge there. Again, you don't want any puddles sitting either along the edge of the tape. They can e even seep underneath the tape and then they sort of pop back in to hurt you later. So going in, I'm gonna again start, I'm gonna start at the top here because this is where I want the darker shadows to be. And then just like the sky, I'm gonna lighten the shadows as I come down. I think we'll actually join that one up there. So you can kind of, within your cloud shapes, you know, you can start to make other shapes and divide maybe one big cloud. If you've got one big cloud and it just looks like a big old lump, you can um, divide it up. Now where you get too much of that spreading there, and it's not a bad thing, it can end up looking a bit like rain that's about to fall, but if you don't like it and it's spreading too much like this, just dry your brush and lift some of the water out of it. It's spreading because wet wants to go across to damp, so if we even out the water levels by picking up some of that water, it'll stay put. I'm picking up the smallest amount on my brush here because the last thing you want to do is to get rid of all the white because then you kill the painting and that's a very easy thing to do whether you're painting you know white clouds or whether you're painting snow it's really easy to end up killing off all of the white and not ending up with any at all so nearly there I'm just gonna get some very watery color and just go down the base here you know I could even if I wanted to just get a little bit of something going on there yeah, the horizon depends you know how stormy you want it to look a bit of a drying line here i'm just gonna join some of this water up because it's starting to dry there and just want to even those levels out you're aiming at all times to keep the water level fairly even again once it's looking okay quit while you're ahead there's a brush hair right here i'm not going to touch it i'm going to pick it off when the painting is dry there we are we have our soft clouds and we have our cloud shadow which makes it look far far more three-dimensional than just having the white alone so next we're going to go back to my crisp edged clouds my more defined clouds and we're going to add the shadows to those but we're going to take a different approach because i don't want to re-wet the whole sky because this will soften the crispness of the clouds that was fine with our soft fluffy clouds but we want to take a different approach this time so i'm going to show you how it's done Make sure you watch until after that as well because I'm going to show you as well how to correct any mistakes because often with these uh, these harder edged clouds, sometimes you find they're a little bit too hard and there are areas that you would have liked to be softer which went hard and I'm going to show you how to correct that after they've dried. So my crisp edged clouds have dried and what I want to do first is remove as much of this pencil as I can. So I'm going to sort of take this out. I might just leave this line here because I quite like this line dividing one cloud from another. So that just gives me um, an idea of where to put the uh, put the shadow. I'm going to take out as much of this other pencil as I can. Now somebody was asking me if you can remove pencil at the end of a watercolour painting and the, the truth is, uh, you know, yes and no you can. Some of it will come off, some of it won't. Depends how much it's blocked in by... Um, by the paint it also depends on the paint itself if you use some of the more opaque paints like cadmiums they tend to block the pencil in a bit more the truth is use as little pencil as possible a lot less than me i have to use more you have to remember when you watch these videos i have to use more pencil than uh, than you do because i need you to be able to see where it is on camera so for yourself just put it on as lightly as possible and then take it off at as early a stage as possible you know if you can take it off once you've used it and you've used it to delineate an edge, don't wait until you've put another six layers of paint on it. Of course, the paint, the paper must be dry because otherwise you'll rip the paper as you uh, as you take it off. There we are. So I've got most of that pencil out. Now I'm going to put the cloud shadows in. 
So as I said earlier, I'm not going to re-wet the whole of this sky because I'd lose the crispness then to these, these sharper edges. So I'm going to wet individual clouds, which is a lot less stressful because I can take a bit more time over it. I haven't got to worry that they're all wet and they're all drying at the same time. But it's not quite as easy um, to apply the, uh, the colour in this way. Um, because if you put water and you get water on top of the paint, the water itself can leave a drying line. You don't need any colour in it, it can still leave a line. So you're going to have to be a little bit careful. Um, so I'm going to apply my water. Let's apply it to this one here. I'm going to make sure that I stop the water short of the edge. So I'm just taking it around all of this inside edge. Of course there's a little bit of paint in here where it's bled in but it's mostly clean paper so I'm taking the water in there. Now the way to avoid the water leaving a, a drying line for instance across this bit of paint here is to make the edge of the water almost a little bit drier. It's hard to explain but what I'm going to do is dry my brush there and sweep out sort of some of the excess water. So you're almost fading the water out actually. Being careful not to go however outside of that area so I have stopped that water short inside and then I'm going to go straight in with a little bit of that shadow colour. I'm going to be very careful not to go right to the edge there. I mean I could do if I want to get you know a crisp edge there as well. If I want to take the shadow right up to the edge of that cloud I could do. But generally speaking I'm going to keep it on the water. It's just a little bit easier so I get a bit more softness there. And then I can work on each of those clouds. As I said I've got separate water here so I don't have to sort of otherwise I'd now be working with dirty water and I'd be putting dirty water on so you always want to work with two water jars if it's um, practical to do so if you're at home particularly. It's, it's not always practical if you're out painting outdoors or if you're not in a class or something but if you're just at home why not have extra water because it's much easier and then you've always got clean water or fairly clean water to apply to areas like this. So again, going in with that water, stopping just short of the edge, no puddles, and then just getting this paint in here. I'll, I'll just, um, just to show the difference, I'll take this one to the edge. If you are going to the edge, you've got to paint quite neatly and go right up to the edge and not over it. Otherwise, you know, you don't want your cloud shadow looking like it extends out past the cloud. That would be some kind of um, strange surreal world so you can take it up to the edge like that or you can stop it just short like this one so over here I've got two clouds and I had a little bit of pencil line. I don't know if you can still see that pencil line there so what I'm going to do in this one um, is I'm going to drop the cloud shadow behind that front edge and so it doesn't matter if I go off the water there because I want a crisp edge now between those clouds because the clouds themselves are crisp I can stop the water just near the pencil line and then when I go in with the paint I'll go up to the pencil line. What that'll do is it'll give me a lovely crisp edge between those clouds. So that's a bit unnatural looking so what I'm going to do is just spread that a bit so you just want to fade that out. Never panic if you know if you put a colour on it's just too dark. Just lift a little bit out or add a little bit more water. So there you can see I've given myself a nice um, a nice crisp cloud, one in front of the other. And then of course, if I want to, I can just put some shadow on this one as well. Being careful again to stop that water before the edge. I'm not gonna allow this water to touch this crisp edge here, otherwise it'll bleed. I mean, I could do the thing like I did in the background and touch it in one place. Let's do that just for fun. Let it touch in one place there. But generally speaking, you want to preserve most of that crisp edge. So we, we're getting the idea that these are crisp clouds without them being, you know, so hard edged all the way around so that there's this idea that they are still quite natural. Just gonna put a bit more water in there. You can, of course, if you want to be um, extremely fancy and you want a bit of bleeding, what you can do is when it's partly dry like that, put a little bit of clean water in there and you know, this is quite good for getting rain effects. So you can do some of that as well if you want to. And if it goes too far, just dry your brush and lift out. So we're getting some really lovely crisp clouds there, but we've also got some natural effects too. 
Now it may be that when painting your clouds and painting your sky you've got one or two little errors. It's not bad enough that you want to throw it in the bin or redo the whole thing but you've just got one or two areas that have dried a bit hard edge where you wanted softness perhaps on the edge of clouds. So I'm going to show you now how to correct that and we're going to do it. It sounds counterintuitive but we're going to do it after the paint has dried. So let's look very quickly at this idea of, um, of softening a hard edge after your clouds are dry and correcting a small mistake. So I've got here a piece of cotton wool and um, I've put some water in it. I've really squeezed as much out as possible. I've got some tissue paper here. Don't worry, it's dry. And I'm just going to squeeze this. If you have something like arthritis and you can't physically squeeze enough to get enough water out, a great tip is to place it on the floor in between some, uh, some kitchen paper, some tissue paper, some paper towel, and then just put your heel on it and you can squeeze it that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this just to soften. I'm looking at this area here. It's a little bit unnatural and I think it's a bit too harsh. So I'm going to soften that area. So, and you can use this as well for, for shadow, not just for the sky. So I'm going to start on this side of it and I'm just, I'm not pressing very hard. I'm just, you don't want to press hard because if you press hard, you can squeeze the water into one place, even though you've sort of wrung this out and you can end up getting a bead of water on your paper. And also if you press hard, you risk as well damaging the surface of the paper. This is quite cheap practice paper I'm using for this particular one here. So if I were to rub hard, I could end up sort of, you know, working on and destroying the uh, the paper. So that's a way. Let's have a look at this little bit of shadow here. That's a way that you can start to just soften areas that are a little bit too hard edged or that you're just not happy with. But remember, don't have this very wet. Otherwise, you do risk making a watermark on your paper and making it look worse than before. And you must make sure your paper's bone dry, otherwise it's not going to work properly either. And then you risk um, destroying the surface of the paper. Do let me know in the comments if you're going to give either of these cloud painting methods a try. And you can also pop over to my Facebook group. We've got a really lovely community over there. Um, lots of amateur artists, but also some that are very experienced. Everybody helps each other. It's a lovely atmosphere. It's a group that I'm really, really proud of. If you enjoyed this video, you're going to enjoy my video about painting watercolour sunsets. You can watch that one right now.